Today we are going to go over the YCS Hartford results. Now last time I already talked about the top 32, but this time we also have a bunch of deck lists that have been coming out over the past few days. Usually, you know, the event ends on Sunday and on Sunday evening a few lists already drop, but you don't really have all of them yet. It's maybe like five or six and then over time more and more drop. And I think by now anyone who wanted to release their deck profile has. So now we have a pretty solid indication of everything that was played. So we already had a top 32 again we'll quickly go over it right here we start off with seven punks yeah punk is taking names right here and seven sword soul tenny followed by four branded despia so again branded despia everyone teched so hard for that it was the most represented in swiss but because everyone was playing anti-spell dimensional barrier dd crows and so forth the deck you know struggled to get quite as many tops as people were expecting again if everyone's playing like six to nine cards just to beat despia despia is gonna do worse then we had three Blue Wanderies. Yeah, a lot of people hate that one. Three Striker, two Branded Eldritch, two Drytron, one Attic Nister, one ABC, one DDD, and one Dragon Link. Again, we won't be talking too much about the top 32 anymore. We already have overall. Some of these one offs are a bit surprising. I was personally actually very surprised by Drytron. Like, I thought it was a good deck, but I didn't expect it to get third and also to be, you know, next to Branded Eldritch. So we'll see. We have right here the first place, the winner. This was a very controversial one. It was Sky Striker. But it was more so just Mystic Mine with a little bit of Striker rather than pure Striker. As you can see, they were playing three Demise of the Land to get out Mystic Mine, three Mystic Mine, one Terraforming, which gets you your area or your Mystic Mine, three Dimensional Barrier, just as pure main deck hate, ruining Despia and Sword Soul, one Metaverse to get the Mystic Mine, and then Triple Trap Trick, which can either get you Metaverse to go into Mystic Mine or it gets you your Dimensional Barrier as hate. So basically, you have a billion ways to get mine it's basically like 10 cards or 11 cards even 11 cards leading to mystic mine and so now of course we have a bunch of people saying ban it ban it ban it other people saying oh you should just be you know main decking hate and so forth i see some people talking about like oh you should just be siding hate everyone is already siding hate everyone sides back row hate it's very rare that they don't if you main deck hate you know it might be one thing the issue is people aren't actually losing to a mystic mine deck out that isn't the point if if you even watch the deck profile of the winner, the Mice of the Land was usually used to just, you know, have your one turn of Mystic Mine, and then afterwards you destroy it after you regain that tempo, and then you kill them. So it's not like their entire goal was to sit on Mystic Mine and deck people out, you know. If they draw into their one out, that's cool. The thing was Mystic Mine locks people out of the game for one turn, maybe two, maybe three, but then you do end up instantly killing them. So even if you main deck hate, like if you main one Cosmic Cyclone or one duster it doesn't matter the odds of you drawing into that in the little short time span where they get their tempo back doesn't make it worth it and then it's also just garbage in a lot of matchups so while saying main deck hate is you know it's easy just draw the out kind of meme it's not you know that simple it's not that two-dimensional of an argument so then for the side pretty weird side you know two ogre two nib also very interesting was the artifact sanctum right here so they could just side lock without doing any combo just flip it very very funny when going first. The second place was uh, Branded Despia. There's no list of that just yet. But the third place was Drytron. And again, this is super interesting to me. Like, we already knew about Striker Mine. Of course, this list is still very creative and still well done to them. We already knew, obviously, about Despia. But Drytron really had to be resolved. And it looks like Justin Singh right here did that. He's running the Ida 10, the 2 Ben 10 now, which is a pretty major deal. We have Natasha. We have Batos Buster, just a magic-y package in here that's really weird of course also triple mystic mine so they were essentially doing the same thing as the other player right here not necessarily decking them out but just randomly going into it and then after that you set your own thing and you, after you regain tempo and then you just destroy them with an otk so we see the set rotation right here i don't know that much about drytron personally beyond to you know the master duel stuff but overall this list is very very different from what we usually see and then the side was triple droll triple token collector triple nib twin twist triple tactic red reboot interestingly almost no despia hate like you could argue that the droll is kind of despia hate because there's quite some despia players playing like the allure build where they do add a lot of cards to hand but overall i don't see like crows or dimensional barrier which is pretty interesting then the fourth place was, was sword soul tenny again this isn't the biggest surprise i think most people knew about sword soul already again we have the crows for despia the veiler the ash the imperm very generic hand traps and you know sword soul tenny has been pretty solved for quite a while so nothing 
nothing too special there. In the side, notice Dark Ruler no more. That is pretty, you know, different. Most people, I guess, are playing Droplets, but we did see this actually in a lot of sides for this event. Next, we had Top 8 Hani. Damn, his Adventurer Punk not being in here is pretty weird because I did see it on YouTube. So uh, you can go check that out on YouTube at one point. But then we do have a Top 8 from Brady here with his Adventurer Punk. So we are seeing Triple Veiler, a Triple Droll. Droll is, you know, making its comeback here. And we have our Jet Synchron, our Magician Souls. I know for a fact Hani wasn't running Magician Souls. So that's actually weird to me. Like when I look at Brave and any pile, I always assume I'm going to see Magician Souls because it's going to draw a billion. But if Hani isn't using it, there's a reason for it. Like I will trust Hani with any deck building ever. If you came back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Like let's say four or three years ago and you would look at like a top deck profile, very often the person would go like, yeah, Hani built my deck. <laughs> so, you know, very good player, a very good deck builder. And so I'm wondering why he's not running the Magician Soul. But Brady was very cool to see. Also the Punk engine. I'm a big fan of Punks. We have the side lock. Of course, this deck wants to side lock. You do the Crystron, Halky Fibrax into your TG Wonder Magician, popping your own side and then your opponent to side locks together with, of course, a Brave package and a Snow in your graveyard, which is really, really solid. Then for the side, one token collector. You might think why basically shooting Riser Dragon can mill that. So that way you always have access to that, even if you're not running that many. Though that is only, you know, going first against Sword Soul. And we have the triple evenly matched going second. We have triple anti-spell, just pure hate. We have the zombie world plus the necro world banshee, because again, with shooting riser, you can just mill that out against Fluanderies and log them out. Two dark ruler, because I already have triple droplets. So that's like five hard board break going second cards and then two nib because they are running quite some hand traps here. Triple ash, triple droll, triple veiler. People are still playing the red rose thing. So that's like, it's sometimes kind of awkward because you really need to like halk into red rose. And then these other two are not really bricks, but semi bricky, but it's worth it because the plusing you get from that is just insane. Your Hulk looks for this and that by itself is like three cards instead of one. And of course, as you know, the punk combo leads to the chaos ruler and so forth. Deer Note was a huge deal. Deer Note is honestly the reason that punk as an engine is being played this way right now. Before Deer Note, that engine was like cute, but not that many were playing it in their piles. Now we have another top eight Sky Striker, top eight Fluanderies, top 16 Drytron. So again, Drytron might be really solid, might be like the sleeper. I did mention this in my in my tier list where like I thought Drytron was pretty good, but I didn't know it was this good. I didn't know it was like top three YCS and then top 16 on top of that. Like that's really, really solid. Also, this build is super different from the third place one. So I don't actually know what the solved build is just yet. I don't know. Let me know if you're a big Drytron player. Do you prefer the top 16 build? Do you prefer the third place build? This one is a bit less decked out, but let me know. Then we have another Sword Soul Tenyi. Again, not too much to talk about. Like most Tenyi builds, most Sword Soul builds are pretty similar. The side, again, very hateful. <laughs> we have double dimensional barrier, double anti-spell, triple DD Crow. So they were ready for a Despia, but of course also the mirror because the barrier does hurt Sword Soul a lot as well. And we have Fluanderies in the top 16. Nothing too surprising except for the main decked Change of Hearts. That's really weird. I thought Change of Heart is pretty good actually. I know a lot of people are calling it like bad or a meme or something like that. I think in the side it still makes sense that they're going second card sometimes, but in the main that's really really ballsy. Though I suppose when you're playing Pot of Prosperity that might be like the board break card you can see relatively reliably when you banish six and that way check very very deep into the deck. So maybe that's the reason but I don't know. Change of Heart is kind of like a non-requirement triple tactics in a way. Then we have top 16 Dominic Couch. So th this is an adventurer punk pile but it has Tyrion on top. I personally found that like super bricky sometimes so I'm wondering if they you know found something that's very different there or if they sometimes bricked or anything along those lines. Adventure, Tyrion, Punk, three very solid engines and they just ran all of them. So we have the one Veiler. They only run one because it's for the Selene combo I assume. And you have the Jet Synchron, Magician Soul, the Rose Dragons and so forth. You have Snow, you have the Brave Engine. Nothing like super surprising. The tuning however is pretty surprising. So basically tuning looks for Jet Synchron and then Jet Synchron is a one card Halka Fibrax. That's really interesting because when you are playing the Brave package, your punks sometimes don't turn on. Like you're literally required to find emergency teleport in order to do the foxy tune full chaos ruler play. However, if you're playing tuning, you now have four more cards that are one card Halka Fibraxis. So then you're not really reliant on that teleport quite as much anymore. I do wonder though how often the Therion engine together with the Brave engine to 
together with the other engine, you know, collide. Because right here, we don't actually see hand traps. We only see one Veiler. So I wonder how good they were going second. You also have the triple Dark Ruler no more. I guess that's pretty good going second together with the droplets. Okay, so rather than hand trapping and stopping people from making boards, they were just trying to break boards. Also, really interestingly, we see the Mystic Mine as well. So this format, it seems like all of the pros decided that Mystic Mine was going to be the thing to go second against people and break boards that way. And we also see the set rotation, which is really interesting with uh, this Colosseum. So you kind of have access to a bunch of stuff. Either you go mine or Colosseum. Another little trick that I saw Dominic Couch mention in his deck profile, actually, because I did watch this one, is that they could set rotation and then give themselves the Colosseum, give the opponent the Mystic Mine, and then Draco back that Mystic Mine back to their hand. So that's really funny to me. I did respect that play a lot. That's like hard plusing just from just from a set rotation play. But hey, it worked very well for them. Again, I'm just wondering if this pricked. Because like, this is high power shit. If they had a full engine life, you know, just Brave Engine, Therions, Punk stuff on top, full boards like that, that is crazy. I just wonder how often these engines just decide to shit the bed. Because you drew like, I don't know, a Wandering Griffin, a Regulus, a Mystic Mine, and a Foxy Tune <laughs> or something like that. You know, like there's a lot of opportunity here for the deck to shit the bed when I was playing this. So I'm wondering how that how that felt for them. Still really awesome. They did it. When it goes off, this is probably like the highest power version of the deck. But again, I'm really wondering about that floor. Next up, we have top 16 again of Luanderies right here. Uh, here we don't see the change of heart. We do see the Mystic Mine. Once again, everyone's on Mystic Mine. I think it's time to accept that this format, because not a lot of people are playing like hard negates, like the negate and destroy stuff that we used to have with boards where everyone was on a Boroload Savage and, uh, and, and all of these, you know, things that would stop your opponent from playing Mystic Mine. Maybe this format, you know, is just Mystic Mine heavy because everyone's playing on Despia Sword Soul, which don't inherently stop Mystic Mine from being played. Though then again, Sword Soul could make the 10, I guess that instantly banishes this. We'll see. Very, very strong right here. Nothing too specific, weird. I guess the extra plus prosperity might break sometimes, though. I guess you just take those. Like, this deck is just desperate to get started with their little birds, because if they don't, they just don't get to play the game. And also, they need their dimension shifters for sure. Also, in the side deck, a dimensional fissure and a macro cosmos. Wow. For if you really hate your opponent. <laughs> Next, we have Advent Adventurer Punk. Once again, big, big fan. Very weird hand trap lineup, however. We are seeing one crow, one veiler, one mourner, one ogre. Just every single hand trap once. Okay. We see two illegal knight and two wandering griffin rider. Huh? One Nibiru, one token collector, one fox. This doesn't seem right. I, I almost doubt that, that this list is correct. I mean, huh? This is like the smallest possible engine you can have for your punks. And your teleport just... This is super weird. A main deck duster. Okay, I'm not gonna comment on this because I honestly don't know if it's cor like if it's if it's a real list. It might be. I don't know. Maybe it's good going second with like four of these. So you always like you're almost always gonna have both Griffin and Illegal Knight. You have a variety of hand traps. So are they playing cross out? They're not even playing cross out. Okay, I don't understand. I might I might literally be too stupid for this list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't understand the one 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 hand traps. Someone in the comments let me know. I also don't understand why you would make your punk engine this small. I mean, I do understand because again, because Brave is live, your Xiamen can't be normal summoned. So like technically they're relatively bricky. But still, this is just a one-offs in hand traps and stuff. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this one. Maybe you have some, some big brain ideas here. Oh, really interesting is also the Desert Locust to make your opponent discard a card of the Hulk. That's really funny. All right, we do once again see Mystic Mine in the side, so that's really funny as well. Next, we have Top 32, Branded Eldritch. A really interesting list right here because we are seeing the Balor draw. So not only are they making like branded plays with Albaz, Despia, so forth, you know, making a Mirror Jade and so forth, super polying their opponent to really powerful stuff. They're also able to set up a Balor Drog negate. You know, Balor Drog is one of the best negates in the game. Uh, zombies, you know, have a really powerful boss. It's just that they consistently die to hand traps but this deck doesn't give a damn because this deck doesn't play pure zombies it just you know gets access to that one really powerful negate and destroy it. this thing does everything it banishes from field and graveyard and negates effects it's really crazy but then of course they're also on tree mystic mine so terraforming metaverse set rotation into the mystic mine place good for them also we see the craziest fucking lineup of floodgates in the traps as well together with the three demise of the land as well wow wow people must have hated this person <laughs> to 
This is a really, really annoying deck to play against, I imagine. Oh, also playing the Despia so they can afterwards, you know, get rid of their own mine. Side deck, three Golem, two Sphere. That's crazy. D-Barrier evenly and their anti-spell. That's that's wild. Top 32 right here. We have the Sword Sultani. Again, nothing too special here to see. We don't see the water thing. We don't see the water tenny, so they can't do the, the little play. But they're, oh, they're not playing the, you know, the way to not get hand-trapped on Moi. They're not playing that. Okay. Then we have uh, Calvin, Calvin Tahan on Sword Soul Tenyi right here. They are playing the Mapura Tenyi. That's really interesting. I don't see that very often. And then they are playing the Dragon Circle as well. All right. Then we have Adic Nister in the top 32. Was this the person making like the mistake in their deck profile or something like that? I don't know enough about Adic Nister, but I remember something about a Bururu or one of these guys not being able to mill a certain thing or something like that. Regardless, we also see three Mystic Mine. So once again, the mine is putting in the work here. Then we have top 32, Branded Despia. Nothing too super special in this list, apart from the fact that they were main and cross out. So not only do they not die to certain hand traps, as you can see, they play the one crow and the one ash, so they can, you know, not get destroyed by the hate quite as much. But in the mirror, this is also really good, because your opponent can, you know, use Branded in red, you go cross out, call Branded in red, and now they don't get to play the game. Okay, beyond that, nothing super special to see. Red Reboot, Zombie World, Triple Token Collector, Triple Nib. So they were very afraid of Sword Soul and Rightfully so next you have top 32 of Luanderies right here nothing super weird the one crow is kind of odd you know it's a winged beast though <laughs> jack in the hand okay yeah and of course we also have our mystic mind because everyone who topped played mystic mind welcome to the new format then we have adventurer sky striker right here also playing the fusion destinies and main decking the d barrier that's very wild as well and then we have top 32 ddd this is the big brain deck that almost no one is able to play but if you're able to play it good job you are able to top with it because it's still really, really powerful. And we have another top 32 branded Despia right here. Nothing too... Well, the draw is pretty weird. They're playing quite some hand traps, actually. Most branded Despias don't have the room for them, but we see triple draw, two Ash, two Nibiru. They're also playing the field spell, which is something not many people do. Two cross out. That's odd. I would assume you would play three, but I can see that they're already playing a lot of stuff that might brick. Like, they're playing the super poly, they're playing the traps, they're playing, like, a lot of hand traps. So I, I could see a, a universe where maybe they were afraid of too many bricks. So I don't know, maybe I would cut a draw then. I don't know, but they topped, so <laughs> what do I know, right? Congratulations to uh, Machu right here. And those are the lists we have so far. Again, it's very possible that there's a few more on YouTube as well, but still, well done. Awesome. Uh, this was a really surprising event for me. This was also the first YCS that I followed really, really closely, like live. Usually I just wait for the deck profiles, but this time I was just, I had tried to um, learn this format pretty well for the first time. <laughs> And so, you know, seeing if I was right or wrong about certain things was really exciting to see. And I was right. <laughs> I thought punks were going to be crazy. And here we are. Punks were crazy. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.